Let's see what happens when the CO2 absorbent becomes exhausted and can no longer remove CO2 from the breathing system. Normally, when the patient exhales, all the CO2 containing gas is directed down the expiratory limb and into the ventilator bellows. At the next breath, gas which leaves the ventilator bellows and moves through the absorber is cleansed of CO2. However, now that the CO2 absorbent is exhausted, CO2 containing gas is able to pass through the absorber and arrive at the inspiratory limb where it is rebreathed at the next breath. The appearance of CO2 at the Y piece and rebreathing of CO2 is easily identified by the elevation of the inspiratory portion of the capnogram, right over here. Initially, the elevation of the inspiratory portion is apparent as it rises above zero. After a short time, the rebreathing of CO2 will also result in an increase in the expiratory portion of the capnogram or an increase in end tidal CO2. Well, how do we correct this problem with the exhausted CO2 absorbent? The best thing to do, of course, is to change the CO2 absorbent. However, what many people do, if there's only a short time left on the anesthetic, or if for some reason no absorbent is available, is they increase the fresh gas flow to the breathing system. Let's do that and see what happens. As we increase fresh gas flow, the animation will change to show the change in the gas flow pattern in the breathing system. As before, every inspired breath is comprised of both fresh gas flow that come from the common gas outlet, as well as previously exhaled gas that is pushed by the ventilator bellows through the CO2 absorber towards the inspiratory valve. However, now, during expiration, we can see that the fresh gas flow that's being added to the breathing system at 10 liters per minute is moving backward through the CO2 absorber and washing the CO2 out of the CO2 absorber and towards the ventilator bellows and out of the ventilator low pressure pop-off valve. Therefore, the fresh gas flow is washing CO2 out of the breathing system and clearing it from the inspiratory limb so that the patient is no longer rebreathing CO2. We can see that in a bit more detail if we bring up a plot of the CO2 concentration in the bellows. Notice that initially the CO2 concentration in the bellows was very high. Then, as we increased fresh gas flow, we started to blow CO2 out of the bellows, wash it out with that increase in fresh gas flow. And notice now that the inspired portion of the capnogram over here is starting to return back towards zero, and the patient is no longer going to be rebreathing CO2 shortly. We can add another tracing to add a bit more detail to the understanding of these events, and I'm going to pause the simulation to make it easier to follow. We can add another tracing, and we can look at the CO2 concentration inside the CO2 absorber itself, inside the canister. Notice again that as the CO2 is being washed out of the bellows by the high fresh gas flow, it's also being washed out of the canister. The canister is being graphed in green and the bellows in blue and those are being washed out because of the high fresh gas flow. If we look back at the very beginning of the production of this problem, we can see that the concentration of CO2 is very high and was relatively constant. Then, as we increased the fresh gas flow, at this point right here, we started to wash the CO2 out of the system. And we'll let the simulation continue running now for a moment. And we'll follow the decrease in inspired CO2 as the capnogram becomes normalized. The high fresh gas flow that we used to wash CO2 out of the breathing system has created another problem, and that problem is hyperventilation. Look, the set tidal volume is still 800 milliliters. However, the expired volume is now 1,080 milliliters. That increase in expired volume is due to the contribution of fresh gas flow to the delivered tidal volume. The tidal volume that the patient receives is derived from two sources. One is the ventilator bellows excursion, and in this case the ventilator bellows is set to deliver 800 milliliters, and the second source is the fresh gas flow. When fresh gas flow is increased, it increases the inspired volume. The longer the inspiratory time, 
the greater the contribution that fresh gas flow can make to the inspired volume. So, for example, if we reduce the inspiratory time by changing the IDE ratio from 1 to 2 to 1 to 4, we would decrease the tidal volume, and we'll see that effect on the next breath. It's apparent in the flow volume loop, which is now smaller than the previous flow volume loop, and the expired tidal volume is changing from 1,080 milliliters to 950 milliliters. So a change in I to E ratio will change the contribution of fresh gas. Another way that we can correct the problem of hyperventilation due to the high fresh gas flow would be to decrease the set tidal volume from 800 milliliters to 400 milliliters. The change in set tidal volume will not be reflected in the movement of the ventilator bellows in this animation. The bellows will still move all the way down. However, we can see that we are producing a smaller delivered tidal volume. You can see that here on the flow volume loop. And also, the expired volume will now show the change. And there it is. The expired volume is 730 milliliters. So in summary, by increasing fresh gas flow, we can wash CO2 out of the breathing system when the CO2 absorbent is not functioning correctly. And we can correct the potential problem of hyperventilation by altering IDE ratio or by altering the set tidal volume.